Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Okay, so five months ago, my wife, 32, died very suddenly. We have a one and a half year old son together and her death hit me really hard. So my wife was American and I'm Austrian. I went to university in Germany and moved here for work. Our son was born while we still lived with her parents and they got used to having him around. Even when we moved out, we lived very close. After her death, they have been very clingy to our son as one would expect but they don't want me to take him back and are reluctant to give him up. My wife was really my only friend in this country and now that I don't have her, I really need the support of my family and of my parents and siblings. When I told my in-laws that I wanted to move back to Germany, they exploded and shouted at me telling me that I couldn't take him away. I do feel bad but I really need the support of my family right now. Am I not wrong? Edit. I feel like I could explain my situation a lot better. I have been thinking of moving back for a month now and the only thing stopping me is guilt towards my in-laws. If I moved back to Germany, not only would I be with my family, but I would have a lot more financial security. I would get a salary three times higher than my current one. And my parents, who are upper middle class, would be able to support me and help me get a house. My son could go to private school and have university paid for. My job is for an American company and I was offered the post in Germany a year ago. But I declined because of my wife and son but now it feels like an ideal situation. This job does allow me to come back to the States fairly often and I can bring my son to stay with his grandparents and of course, they are welcome to visit. Sorry if that was unclear. I do feel a lot of guilt by making this decision but I think it's best for me and subsequently my son but I can't stop feeling devastated for my in-laws. I lost a wife and they lost a daughter. And now for some comments. No one is in a wrong in this situation. I'm so sorry for your loss. This must be devastating for you and also for the parents of your wife. While you have every right to take your son to your country where you'll find the comfort of your family and friends, your in-laws also have the right to feel incredibly sad about it. You're taking away the only person who connects them to their daughter. No jerks here. Just people full of sorrow. No one is in a wrong. Your child is all they have left of their daughter, so it's understandable they don't want to let go. At the same time, they aren't thinking about your health and what's best for you. And you need to be healthy, mental-wise, in order to take proper care of your kids. Perhaps try and schedule some future visits with them now, so they don't feel you are abandoning them and have something to look forward to. I understand that you are grieving too, but you need to understand that this behavior is not acceptable. I cannot and will not allow my son to watch his only remaining parent get paraded by people who claim to care about him. If you truly care about my son and want to remain a part of his life, which I hope you do is I want him to hear you tell him stories about his mother, you need to recognize that I am his father. And in order to be the best father I can be to him right now, I need the support of my family, which means returning home to Germany. Once we get settled in, I hope we can plan for you to come visit us. You're not in a wrong. The world is much smaller than it used to be and there is absolutely nothing stopping them from remaining part of your son's life. The only thing currently threatening the relationship with him is their own behavior. My dad died when I was a baby. I'm 16 now, male. My mom remarried when I was 4 or maybe 5. I don't really remember a time my stepdad wasn't around. Though that's not a very good thing, he's a crappy stepdad and a bad dad to my siblings, stepsister who is 15, brother who is 10, and sister who is 9 and brother who is 7. My mom stays with him though and just lets him not be involved or even nice to his own kids because she doesn't want to be alone. My dad's family has been in my life always and I'm very close to them all. My dad's only sister and I were extra close. She adored me. 
and always told me that I was just like my dad and he was the best man she knew. She said he would be so proud of me. Sadly, she died a few months ago and left a bulk of everything to me, which she had a lot of assets. My mom and stepdad were annoyed when they heard because she left my cousins or something, even if not as much as me. But nothing for my stepsister or siblings, who they considered her their aunt as well. That family has included them in some stuff to be nice, but they are not considered grandkids or anything like that. My mom told me what I got should be split equally between all of us. I said it shouldn't, because my aunt wanted stuff left to me. She told me if I asked my grandparents to give me access to the money now, that they would, and that we could all benefit from it. I told her they would do that, but I'm not going to ask. My stepdad told me my siblings will now realize we, me and my paternal family, hate them and don't want them and they will see what a bad brother I am and what a good sister his daughter is. She actually hates our siblings and has never had a good relationship with them. Mom told me that I was hogging more than I would ever need and not thinking of their futures. Am I in the wrong? ETA? My grandparents already know what is going on and only they can access the money since my aunt set it up that way. If I wanted to access it, then I'd need to go through them. So the money is safe. And now for some comments. You're not in the wrong. Please tell your grandparents that your mother is pressuring you and that you don't want to split the money or give it to your mom. If your grandparents live nearby and you get along well with them, could you consider moving in with them if you get too much pressure at home? Side note, don't be spending that money, live simply and save it. Don't tell your friends, don't get some flashy car, you don't want the heat that will bring and the parasites that will come crawling. You're not in a wrong. Your stepfather's children have their own paternal family to care for them, as well as your mother's family. In other words, they have two sets of family just as you do. Whether or not those people have assets to share is not your problem. Your aunt left assets to you specifically and to her bloodline. You don't owe this money to anyone, not even your siblings. They are not your responsibility. Your mother and stepfather are jerks for attempting to manipulate you, a child, out of your assets. Should you, at a later date, choose to gift your siblings something, that is up to you. But you should wait until you're a legal adult to decide. This is near and dear to my heart because I lost my husband when I was pregnant. I'm not remarried and my son is six. But should anyone in my late husband's family leave him anything, it will be his. I am so sorry your family is acting this way and pressuring you. This is not okay. I would maybe speak confidentially with your grandparents about the situation and see if they can put this in a trust for you. Let them know that you feel that your mother and stepfather would mismanage these assets and ensure an adult is in charge in case they pass away. My son married his high school girlfriend when he was 19. I told him I don't approve of his choice for two reasons. One, he is too young. And two, we never liked his girlfriend so I will never help with anything. They have two kids, Jonah, male 17, and Laura, female 16. When Laura was born, my son begged me for help because they couldn't afford childcare for two kids, even though they both work full-time and none of them can become a stay-at-home parent because they need the money. Even though I told them I won't, I decided to help anyway. Because of my grandkids, of course. I hired a nanny for them. The problem is that whenever we were at their home, I noticed that his wife only takes care of Jonah and leaves Laura completely to the nanny. I never saw her play with Laura or anything. All while she was holding Jonah and playing with him. Once I told her it won't kill her to touch her daughter sometimes, which caused a huge fight between us and I fired the nanny and told him the only help I will give is that I will babysit Laura for them and pay for everything she needs, but I won't help with anything else. My wife and I took care of Laura more than her own parents did. My sweet daughter turned 16 a few months ago. I bought a car for her, she earned some of the money by helping me with my job and I paid for the rest. Jonah is turning 18 in a few months and my son asked me to help buy a car for him. I told him I'm sorry but 
I won't do that because I made it clear that I will only help with Laura's expenses. He accused me of showing favoritism and called me a jerk being a terrible grandfather for giving one child a luxury life but not doing anything for the other one. I told him I'm doing this because he and his wife are terrible parents to Laura so someone needs to favor her. And now for some comments. Everybody sucks. You thought it was wrong that your daughter-in-law showed favoritism? So you responded by showing favoritism? Are you familiar with the phrase two wrongs don't make a right? Everyone sucks. Except the kids, of course. It is not your grandson's fault that his parents are jerks. Don't take it out on him. By all means, tell your son and daughter-in-law to bounce and, but don't take it out on the kids. Me, 35 male and my wife, 34, have 5 children. 16 male, 14 male, 11 male, 11 female and 9 male. We adopted our youngest 6 years ago. My brother, 35, and his wife, 32, have been married 2 years and my brother has 2 boys, 15 and 13, from a previous relationship. We take it in turns to have Christmas at each other's houses. This year it's my turn to have everyone over. My wife and my sister-in-law were going out to lunch a few weeks ago when my youngest was brought up in the conversation. My sister-in-law said that it was strange that we adopted him as we already had children. She asked if we were guilted into it. I asked where she had heard that as it wasn't true. She said that it was just something she and my brother had discussed. My wife was very upset so didn't go to lunch and my sister-in-law left. I spoke to my brother and he confirmed that he did discuss it with his wife but she should never have said anything. I said that they probably shouldn't come to ours for the holidays if that's how he feels. I said I didn't want him saying anything in front of our son. He said that my son probably already knows and then he got angry and said it didn't mean anything and that I was overreacting. I said I didn't want him around my son and left it like that. My sister-in-law has been calling us jerks to everybody and saying that we have ruined Christmas for them. My brother has apologized and tried to get us to invite him but I said no. Edit. The boys are still coming, I worded the post wrong and have changed it now. My ex-sister-in-law brings the boys here on Christmas Eve and they stay here with my children. Then they go to my brother on Christmas Day. And now for some comments. You're not in a wrong. I particularly like how your brother is trying to throw his wife under the bus when he's the one who not only decided to speculate on why you might not actually love your kid as your kid, but double down when called on it with oh, he probably knows. And he's surprised you don't trust him not to say anything stupid or hurtful. Maybe some other relative can bring the kids, but he can stay gone until he actually comes to grips. With what his problem is enough to make a real apology. You're not in a wrong, good for you. You sound like a wonderful father. It was right of you to shut that down as soon as you heard it was going on and to protect your youngest from those kinds of words. You did not ruin Christmas. As a matter of fact, your brother and his wife are the ones who ruined the chance to have a family holiday. Don't let anyone guilt you guys into changing your mind. I am super proud of you as a dad. Let me preface this by saying that I genuinely don't believe I'm in a wrong. But my brother Ben, the other party, is incredibly rational and is typically my sounding board for everything. Hence why I'm seeking outside judgment. Our grandfather passed recently and from his estate he gave our mother a portion. He gave Ben, my sister and I, a portion, and he gave my sister's son Henry a portion, in a trust that is to be accessed when he's 18. He's currently 3. Ben is in a relationship with Cassie, who has a 6-year-old son, Josh, from a prior relationship. Ben and Cassie have been together for 3 years and are talking about getting engaged, and we are all happy for them. However, Ben believes that Josh should be entitled to some money in a trust from my grandfather's estate, in the same way Henry received. His argument is that Josh and Henry have been in our family for the same amount of time, and Josh shouldn't be penalized for not being his biological kid. He brought the, 
He brought this up at a family meal on Sunday. A mix of other family members were also there. I told Ben that I disagreed with him, that Henry and Josh are entitled to different things, at least until Ben were to adopt Josh someday or he and Cassie marry. That my grandfather may have known both children for the same amount of time, but you couldn't expect him to base his will on that fact, and that this is all moot because my grandfather's estate was his to split and what's done is done. Ben said I'm insensitive to the position he's in, looking after another man's child and becoming a father in a more challenging way. Again, I said none of that really matters in this, because it's not about morality, but financial practicality. Ben accused me of suggesting his family is worse less than our sisters. I told him that of course that is not true, but it was inappropriate to bring this up at a family meal and that our sister would at least know better than to disrespect my grandfather's memory by discussing his estate at the table. Ben finished his meal in silence, but when he left he said, I've been rude. I made him feel uncomfortable and I should have his back when it comes to these sorts of issues. Am I in a wrong here? And now for some comments. You're not in a wrong. Grandpa made his decision to leave money to the immediate family. Therefore, no reason to argue about it. If it's such an issue, he could give some of the money he gets to Josh. You're not in a wrong. Your brother Ben should know the reason his girlfriend's stepson was excluded from the will. It's the same reason that he hasn't married this lady despite having been with her for three years. If he hasn't even brought himself to make a lifetime commitment to this woman after spending three years with her, how can he expect his grandfather to bequeath his assets on her child when he barely even knows them. By that same token, how can he accuse you of devaluing his family when he's the one who stole on actually making them his family for so long? Thank you for watching and see you next time.